Welcome everyone to Something More. I'm Donna Chavis and my guest today used to be known as the son of the devil. Well, no longer. If you know John Ramirez, John, <laughs> now you are. I am the son, the follower of Jesus Christ. Kicking the day, devil. Every day. <laughs> Kicking the devil, eviction notice. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, if anybody knows your testimony, uh, you were a high priest in Satanism, a satanic high priest. I was more like a satanic high priest, but my rank was a general in the kingdom of darkness. Wow. I was a general in the kingdom of darkness. Nothing moved, nothing operated in the spirit realm unless I was involved. My, my, that's, that's so hard to believe knowing you now because you're just full of the power and the love of God. I, I don't know if everybody knows your story. Let's start there. Well, give me a little background, your childhood. Well, my childhood, I, I, you know, I grew up, my, my, the lineage of my father's side of the family was all witches and warlocks, and uh, we practiced spiritualism, Santeria. And Santeria, is, 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 they, they call it worship of saints. And, and that's just, that just sugar-coated it because in the background, the back door of Santeria is worship of demons. Mm. And uh, I grew up at the age of uh, seven. Uh, you know, I, at the age of seven, I knew that um, I, I used to see my father. My father would worship the devil in the home. He had, a, he had a room that he would go into and worship the devil. You could feel the presence of the devil in that room. I, was, I would stand by uh, far, far and looked into the, like, the crack of the door. He left it kind of open. Mm. And I would kind of seven year old looked in and see this 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 thing in, in that room that was so ferocious and the fear would just grip me and I would just run into the living room and my father would come out of there and then he'll put the living room on fire and he'll take me and my brother and jump us over the fire and uh, he said that was good for us and and before you know it you know I was so wrapped into the occult and uh, from the age of eight years old to the age of 35 25 years of my life was gone into mm -hmm. the occult from devil worshiping from uh, demonic church going there being trained by witches and warlocks how to be uh, how to move in the spirit realm yes and and I know <laughs> I probably asked myself, how does someone get into something like that? But your father was very abusive, and you, you didn't feel any love from your father. No, no, not, not at all. You know, I, th I think, I think the, you know, the, the, love, the, the love of the father is so important in every family. And uh, that, that wasn't the case in my home. My mm -hmm. home, the love of my father was absent. Mm -hmm. And not only absent, you know, my father will still be home, and he'll still be absent. Because my father didn't right. know how to love. Right. Because he was never loved. Mm -hmm. So he knew how to love us, me and my brothers. So we wanted that, that, that recognition, you know, hey, you know, go to the baseball game, go out to the park and play catch, or mm -hmm. go take the bike out, or, or take us to a Yankee mm -hmm. game, or, or do something with us. Or even when we came up to report cars home, or, you know, maybe a pat on the shoulder, a hug, mm -hmm. that was, there was nothing like that. So, so that was so absent. It was so uh, it empty, makes you empty. desperate, doesn't it, for, yeah, oh, for yeah, oh, yeah, acceptance, yeah, acceptance for love? I mean, for, I think we all yeah. do. I think young, old, in between, every person is looking to be loved. Mm -hmm. And you actually did some type of a ceremony to be inducted into this cult. You know, I was, you know, people don't know this, and I say this, I share this very few times, but I was, I was, even though my father was, my father practiced witchcraft for many years, my aunt was still a witch. She practiced witchcraft. She's still in the, in the witchcraft round in, uh, in Santeria and spiritualism in Palama Yumbe. My, my, just to say this, my induction to the, to the occult was at the age of seven. I was in a playground, schoolyard, playground, uh, broken lot where the building was demolished. And mm -hmm. I was standing there, and this necklace fell from the sky and uh, from the second heaven, and it fell and hit the ground. And it was the colors. It was, uh, it was, called, the seven, it was called the seven colors of the dark side. Mm -hmm. of the seven powers of the dark side. It's, yeah. it's the seven powers yeah. of the dark side. When it fell on the ground, I took the necklace, I put it in my pocket because I was with a friend, and I didn't want him to take the necklace, and I heard my mom's voice. And I, could, I know that was in my mom's because I, mean, we, I was miles away from yeah. my house. My mom couldn't scream that loud and said, Johnny, come home. So when I went home, I put the necklace on, and I was in my induction from the first, first and second heaven where the principalities reign and rule. And then from there, I was ushering by humanity, my dad and my family, I was ushering through car reading, tower car reading at the mm -hmm. age of eight. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got inducted. From the age of eight, mm -hmm. 35 years old, I was engulfed in the mm -hmm. dark side. And when you say a general of, of, of the dark world, of, of darkness, you actually 
would astro project yourself? You, you sacrifices. What kinds? What well, kinds animal, of things? Well, animal sacrifices, cutting, uh, drinking animal blood, drinking your own blood. You have to cut yourself and drink your own blood. Uh, going, going, doing different ceremonies, uh, different, different ceremonies, different de territory demon, ground demons, principalities, yeah. uh, knowing the, the rituals and the ceremonies, and, the, and and knowing the language, the demonic language, and moving into the ranks of the demonic ground deeper and deeper and deeper as the devil allows you to move entrusted to you with deeper secrets of the demonic side. So in, in, in that alone, I moved up to the, I, I even got married on Halloween. I had a demonic wedding on Halloween. Mm -hmm. That was my, a, a true marriage on Halloween. I got yeah. a demonic wedding Halloween. So so moving them into the ranks and then the devil allowing you and they're making different di different contract with different demons that they, they, they had the powers to, to take your soul out of your body and actually project. So those contracts, I, I ran out of, I did, I did all the ceremonies in the witchcraft for her. There was no more ceremonies mm -hmm. to do. I even did the last ceremony I did before I, I came to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. It was called Sansi, which is a Haitian ceremony. That yeah. they, they, uh, they, 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 they closed the ceremony with, uh, uh, with ice bucket water. They do that, and, and that, that was the last ceremony. And then my last meeting with the devil was, uh, I went to a meeting and I was still tw between two worlds. And mm -hmm. I went to the meeting and the devil came down in that meeting after 12 o'clock. And he said, my son, in demonic language, he said, my son, could I talk to you? I said, sure. And I wasn't even there because I was so numb. Mm. And I was so numb to p p p trying to wrap my mind around yes. which direction I wanted yes. to go. And he said, you know what? God throws out of heaven. And I said, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. He said, because God was jealous of us. And that's why he threw us out of heaven. Oh. And then the devil mm. left. And mm. I walked home at 4 in the morning. It was 10 degrees. I didn't feel nothing. Wow. And, that was, and from there, you know, Jesus Christ appear. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question before we leave that. When you were talking about astro projecting mm -hmm. around neighborhoods, countries even, and, and, regions. and uh, regions, yes, uh, uh, speaking curses and putting curses mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on people, you said you, uh, and, then, and then sometimes you would see a different scenario when you were doing this, and it was people. Uh, in their homes, and they were praying and speaking the name of Jesus, and and um, well, I saw that in the was spirit different. Realm, you know, mm -hmm. because the thing is, see, the devil got the devil is very powerful. You know, that's undeniable. Let's say that, mm -hmm. but he doesn't mm -hmm. have the right power against Christians. So I, I would actually project, leave my body, go around whatever the de what the, whatever the demonic demon I had the contract with, that's what they call the civil court. Because mm -hmm. the civil court is not a civil court, it's the contract. The, yes. the, con the contract, okay. the balance and scrolls okay. of what you make. Okay. So when I used to leave and go over these regions, I would curse, nine out of 10 regions, I would curse, put poverty spirit, homosexual spirit, witchcraft spirit, uh, uh, alcohol spirits. I would strengthen up the corners of the four corners of, this, of, of, of that region because it represents the four corners of the world. I would curse it, make it stronger, so there was no way that they can preach the gospel there. Mm -hmm. So I would do all these things, mm -hmm. but there was a set of Christians there was a group of Christians, I call them special ops, spiritual snipers. Special ops. <laughs> <laughs> special ops, spiritual sniper. They knew how to pray spiritual warfare. So what would happen when you would encounter that, when you would see that? When I would come in, into, into that region, I would come into that neighborhood, I would come in, and I already was ready in the spirit, and I was set up to just kill, steal, and destroy everything, and, and just reinforce the devil's work in that region. And I will see a group of Christians holding hands in a circle. Mm -hmm. And circle means unity. Yeah. I mean, you can't break that unity. Yeah. You can't break that. There's power and unity. You know, there's power and unity. You can command a blessing in yes, unity. Yes. So they had that unity going on. And I know they were the church because they were dressed funny. <laughs> so they were dressed funny. They had long clothes. You know, <laughs> they, they knew, I knew they were not, they were not devil worshipers. Mm -mm. I knew, and they would pray. And the power of their prayers, the, 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 the arsenal that was coming out of, out of their mouths would paralyze me and will push me back and will chase me out of the, that neighborhood. And I was so frustrated because I knew that the devil was gonna be disappointed with me that night because I didn't accomplish nothing in that area, in that neighborhood, that region, that country. Wow, wow. Well, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, John is gonna tell us about the time where he ran right into a power that was greater than the one that he served. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More. I am here with John Ramirez. And John, I, I want to make sure we don't 
move too quickly past what you just said before we went to break. When you were astroprojecting all around these different regions to, to put curses on them, and you would encounter believers, I just want believers to know how powerful that was. You know, I, 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 at times the enemy tricks you, and he, he, he puts it in your mind that your prayer is not working, mm. that your prayer is not being effective, because a lot of times we focus too much on the natural. But God is a supernatural God, and I believe that every prayer works. And, you know, so, so those, these, these group of Christians that I encountered when I used to actually project, whether it was, a, was a, another country, a region, a uh, neighborhood, they knew, they knew that their prayers were powerful. Nothing mm. comes back void when you put the name of Jesus. Nothing, nothing comes back empty when you put the name of Jesus. And nothing comes back undone when you put the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your prayers work. Your prayers are fearless. Your prayers are unmovable, unshakable, yes. all powerful. It, it, your prayers are like a nuclear bomb dropping into the devil's camp. And the devil, you bring back the devil into the Flintstone ages. He will have nothing to accomplish, anything grip you, or anything that he can do when you start to pray. And, you know, and one thing I give an example, my daughter was very going through a lot of stuff. And I will, and, and, and one thing, one thing, this is, this is, this is the strategy that I had. I will, I will say, Lord, what about my daughter? What mm -hmm. about my daughter? My daughter's fragmented. My daughter, she's not saved. My daughter, you know, she speak, she speak worldly. She would curse me. She would curse yeah. at me. You know, and I was, you know, you know, one thing I've learned in my prayer language, in my prayer life, I've learned, I said, the Lord said, take care of my house and I'll take care of yours. Oh, and and and, 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 yeah. and when I went out, I started doing altar call for all little people, all kids. I started to pray over them, pray over them, pray over them, mm. pray. I would pray everywhere I go. I would do altar call for all little people, all churches. Every, I, all, and I'm, what I'm saying with this is the power of prayer, that mm. the devil can't do nothing because the devil got power, but not power against the real believer. And I started to pray, and I started to pray for other people, and I started to do things for all the other teenagers and other kids and all that. Mm. And you know what? God, now today, my daughter calls me for prayer. My daughter calls me to, awesome. for, for spiritual, for, 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 godly, for godly wisdom. And, and today I have such an amazing relationship with my daughter. And, and I'm, I'm saying is that you can, you know, one thing, pray for your neighborhood, pray for your neighbors. Pray for your community. Go around. If you see things in your neighborhood that aren't godly, lift them up in prayer. Say, Lord, today we shut this down in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray mm -hmm. that this place will become a church, a front, a front for a church. Lord, pray into the atmosphere. Pray into your neighbor. Pray into your region. Pray into your community. Change the atmosphere in your community. Change your neighborhood, and God will change your family. Yes. Wow. Tell me about how that transformation happened. You, you, you'd met a girl, you liked the girl, she invited you to church, <laughs> so you're like playing the church thing, but weren't willing to give up the demonic thing either. So you kind of found yourself uh -huh. maybe, yeah. Two worlds. Right. So I was committed happened? to one and falling in love with the other one. Mm -hmm. And it was, the girl was, I think the girl was, uh, she was something that God used at the moment. Because uh, I was like, well, I can go in a relationship with her. She lives right in my neighborhood. I don't have to move my car. <laughs> so I told you, you know, I said, I said, gas. I don't have to go far. We can walk around the neighborhood, get something to eat or whatever. And that was my, my thinking because I wasn't going to leave the witchcraft for her. I said, for her, I'm not leaving the witchcraft. I'm, I wouldn't even leave the witchcraft mm -hmm. girl for my mom, some for my mm -hmm. daughter. I'm, 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 I'm here to the end. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to hell, but I don't really care because you know what? I'm going to finish everything I need to finish. The devil wants me to finish. And right. that was my mindset, you know? And, 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 and somehow the girl said, hey, you know, we got together. And uh, she said, if I stop dating people and you stop dating people, we date each other. I said, okay, well, you know, you convenient. You live two minutes away, so that'll work for me. And, uh, and she's very pretty. I'm not taking nothing away from that, but the thing was, that was God's plan. And, and, and I came to church, and when I came to church, uh, I asked the devil permission first. I said, devil, I asked oh. the devil permission, because you have to ask the devil permission for every step of the way. Mm. So I, I, I sat down that night, I spoke to the devil, the presence of the enemy came to the room. I said, some girl invited me to church, should I go? And he said, he said, go, those people are weak. Oh. They're weak people, you mm. can go. You got more power than they do. So I went to church. Then some lot of stuff happened after that. But when you got into that place to where you were feeling pulled, you know, the demonic and then, you know, this introduction to true Christianity and believers, I mean, you got 
to the point to where you 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 wanted out of something to where you were even thinking about committing suicide. Yeah, you know, it, it came to a point that it came to a point that I got demon possessed in church. I grabbed the pastor by the throat. I picked him up in the air. I said, "I came to kill you today." The pastor could not breathe. The pastor was turning purple, and uh, people rushed. All these men rushed and tried to take me off from. Other people went into spiritual warfare praying for me, a person that you know you should have hated. Yeah. A person that should have been gross and disgusted why he's here in church. This person is the enemy. Why would we have to pray for him? And people went into spiritual warfare praying wow. for me at that moment. It happened twice. Wow. And, uh, and then I was feel like I was being torn by the enemy this way. And by the, I was feeling like I was being torn by the Lord Jesus Christ this way. And I was losing my mind. So I said, well, maybe if I commit suicide, uh, I can leave my daughter the insurance. Because uh, I love my daughter, regardless mm -hmm. of how messed right. up I was. I right. love my daughter. I didn't right. know how to love her, but I loved her. And I said, I leave her right. the money. I commit suicide. I sat on the bed that October night, and I felt God was still God was still trying to get a hold of me. But it, it was so hard to shake the love of Jesus, man. It was so hard. I mean, it was so hard. Even to the point, I came from a club one night, to just make a long story short, and there was a man on a wheelchair, and the devil said, attack him. And I told the man, you got in the wheelchair because of this. I started to false prophesy to him. I had a guy that was a New York City narcotic police officer. This guy was hardcore. He started to cry. I said, I'm not hanging out with you anymore. You're a sissy. So <laughs> I, I, I walked away, and I went home that night. And in my bed, I said, if I commit suicide, the devil can't get me, and Jesus can't get me. So I, my daughter get the money. And I, I said, I, then I just, this is, I, I just said like this. I said, God, I don't know who you are, Jesus, whatever they call you. I don't want to be part of you. I said, what were you and my moms were getting beat up? When were you and me and my brothers mm -hmm. went hungry? When were you when we went, me and my brothers were wearing mm -hmm. the same outfit, the same clothes at school for three years? When were you and my brother, my mother was getting beat up all night long? You didn't show up. You left me at the schoolyard. Yeah. As yeah. a little boy, you passed me by at the schoolyard. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't love me. I'm, I'm going to finish my course with the devil. And did you really, John, did you really say to God, you either prove to me who you are or leave me alone. Yeah, I, I, because that was it. I, I was up to here and I, I was up to here. I was, I, this is the first time I was feeling depressed. Mm -hmm. The first time ever I wasn't depressed in the world. I would dance to the commercials. I'll be yeah. in every club. Yeah. I was in, and I was up to here already. I was like, I said, listen, I don't know what they call you, Jesus, God, whatever your name is. Leave me alone. If you're not gonna prove to me that you're not bigger than my daddy, the devil, then leave me alone. I don't want nothing to do with you. I, I renounce all this stuff. I don't want nothing to do with you. I told you, leave me alone. And I mm. fell into this deep sleep like Adam. And now, I mean, Jesus took the Pepsi challenge. He showed up. And <laughs> I left my body, and I left my body for the first time ever, like never in my life. Mm -hmm. I, and, I, and I actually project, like I have more mileage than any airline. I should project so much. I was so addicted to astral projecting. I would astral project during the day. That's how you're supposed to actually project at yeah. night only. I would yeah. do. I was so hooked on astral projecting that when I left my body that night, and then I ended up in this place that has an address called hell. Mm. I walked the portals of hell. I, I I was on a train that was hellbound. I left my body, and I ended up in a train hellbound. And the train hit hell in such power, in such speed. That speed is not even described on the earth. That's how fast it was going to hit. Opened the doors, I stepped down into hell, and I said, I don't, I don't belong here. And when I stepped on the grounds of hell, it was breathing, and I saw people from the occult in hell that were still alive on the earth, saying that they're not gonna make it. And uh, I walked the portal of hell, and the cross of Jesus Christ showed up. The devil tried to kill me in hell, but the cross protected me. I came back into my body, in 1999, I knew that that was my only chance that God was giving me to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, I always loved you. Oh. Wow. And, and that is exactly what John did. Yeah. He surrendered his life, life. and now, <laughs> look out mm. devil, because John That's Ramirez right. is ready to evict you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be back in just mm -hmm. a moment with more from John Ramirez. Welcome back to Something More, everyone. I'm here with John Ramirez, and as you just heard, John was miraculously and powerfully saved. And John, now you are like a coach that knows all the strategies and the whole playbook of the enemy. So what are you doing with that? You know, I, I today, you know, I, I, I fit in the office as an evangelist. I travel mm -hmm. the world, I preach. The Lord has given me a ministry to work. Uh, I would say God given me 
uh, something uh, to glorify his name. And I always say, when I leave the earth, I'll make Jesus Christ proud and the devil will rejoice that I left the battlefield. Mm. And I, I know the plans and the schemes and the wiles and the patterns and cycles of the kingdom of darkness. See, the kingdom of darkness works in patterns and cycles. That's why you see people get free six months later, they're back in the same situation mm. yes. because it's patterns and cycles that the enemy has a grip on that person, whether it's fear. You know, fear starts with worry and your worry starts with panic and panic turns into fear. Yes. And, and, it, and, it, and it just trickles down like, like, like a, a ripple effect. Yes. And I, I'm teaching believers, I'm teaching people all over the world that you can, you can give fear an eviction notice. You can cut the rope. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to be tormented in your mind over something that is temporary. Storms don't last. And I got the playbook of the enemy, how you can break away and be set free. Yes, yes. Well, I want you to pray before we leave. I'd like for you to uh, minister to those that might be suffering from any type of fear today, and then also um, a salvation prayer for those that want to know this powerful, powerful Amen. God. Amen. So I just, I just want to just, I just want to speak to your heart today. You know, I, I, I grew up in a place that was broken, fragmented. I grew up in a place that were. Uh, the pieces are missing. And the only person that know how to put the puzzle together, I think he's the master architect of your life, is Jesus Christ. All you have to say, you can say like John Ramirez say, hey, if you're for real, show me. You, you, wherever you at, you can say, Lord, show me. And it's a simple prayer. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, you know, forgive me for my sins and be my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and write my story. And I believe that God will take that challenge and he will write your story. And I, I just want to pray for people tonight. I just want to pray for people today that, mm -hmm. that you, you grip by something. You are paralyzed by something. And a lot of times we, a lot of time we grow old, but we don't grow up. And a lot of times we, we stuck in a place that we should have been further up ahead on down the road. And I'm praying for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, because that's the name that is above every name. So if you're oppressed, depressed, if you're going to suicide thought, if you're going to fear, anxiety, whatever situation, there is a name that is above every name that we just mentioned. That name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Every name has to bow down to that name. So Father, in the name of Jesus today, we paralyze, break, destroy, dismantle, uproot, we curse at the root. In the name of Jesus Christ right now, fear and any demonic satanic attack over anyone right now that is listening. We paralyze the devil's camp. We confuse their language and let those devils attack one another in the name of Jesus and set your family free, set yes. you free, whether you have infirmity, you might have cancer. You might be in a place that you think that you're done, but you're not done. It is the beginning of new beginnings. So, Father, right now, we put the devil on notice in Jesus' name, and we break this demonic powers over every listener, every person that's listening, yes. the sound of our voice. Father God, this is a divine appointment to set people free. So we thank you, Lord, for the freedom and the healing and the deliverance power of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. John, thanks for being with us. <laughs> thank you us. so much. Amen. And thank you for watching Something More today. Hope you'll join us next time. Thank you.